This is Jonathan Ferguson, the keeper of firearms and artillery at the Royal Armouries Museum in the UK, which houses a collection of thousands of iconic weapons from throughout history. And today, because you guys asked for it a lot, he's going to be breaking down the guns of 2019's Call of Duty Modern Warfare to see how accurately they're portrayed within the game. And of course, we have the hip fire minigun. Long story short, no. Let us know if there are any other games, guns, or mechanics you want Jonathan to break down, but right now, here's Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Can't go loud. Need a suppressor. That'll do it. Okay, first pause. So we've just seen our protagonist retrieve an automotive component from a car's engine bay, and uh, anyone that's played the game will know this is a car's oil filter, which is magically being attached to the muzzle of this pistol, this 1911-type uh, pistol. Now, you can make, without going into any details, a sound suppressor of sorts from an oil filter. Suffice it to say, you cannot screw it straight onto the end of a gun. It's also not potentially going to last very long. It's not going to be very efficient as a suppressor. The amount of sound suppression you're going to get from this is going to be relatively minimal. People will still hear a gun going off. Good eye. The sound suppressor is also far too quiet. Um, it's not quite Hollywood pew pew. There's a, there's a bit of meat to the to the sound there, but for, the, for gameplay purposes, obviously it's quite muted, uh, way more than what this repurposed bit of equipment could provide. Shoot the left awesome. So we've switched now to the the infamous Deagle with the same um, oil filter sound suppressor on it. Sound suppressors on Desert Eagles are um, rare, shall we say, because there isn't much point to the Desert Eagle in the first place. Making it quieter is not usually something people want to do. Enemy helicopter! Pausing. So this this was a surprise when I was playing through uh, the game myself. We have the German Car 98K uh, rifle, carbine of the Second World War, and we have it fitted with a sniper scope. This is a genuine configuration of the Second World War period. There's quite a strong tradition in Call of Duty, of course, of uh, callbacks to the old World War II um, and now the newer World War II card games. So seeing a Car 98K in the campaign is almost expected but obviously in context you think well why we're in a modern conflict zone here why do we have this second world war bolt action rifle it's not completely implausible these pretty robust well-made powerful capable rifles are still around they have been used certainly in afghanistan they have been used to engage allied forces with so they're, they're definitely a, a, th a real threat where they're used they're just not perhaps super common and certainly with a with a sniper scope on there in, in good enough condition to actually use it'd be pretty surprising to see that in real life and we've seen our first use there of the what's called in the game the odin 12.7 millimeter 50 caliber assault rifle 50 caliber assault rifle is feels like a contradiction in terms but um in case anyone isn't aware, this is a real weapon. Russian, uh, a Russian design um, known as the um, Aish-12. This thing is developed for the FSB, the um, successor to the KGB. So specifically developed for people that need to counter terrorism, essentially. So if a terrorist is wearing body armor, this thing is going to, to bypass that. Oh. And that, that 12.7 bullet is really quite nicely modeled in terms of the sound effects and the sort of visceral feel of, of firing it and the effect on the um, virtual bad guys, of course. It's kind of interesting that you don't have to make things up uh, to introduce something new and interesting to a long running series like this. Open the door! Pausing. Now this was the level that I 
enjoyed the most playing through the campaign myself. I hesitate to say enjoyed because it's got a bit of real world uh, resonance to it. But thinking of um, the old school Rainbow Six games, counter-terrorist stuff, um, I, I found really quite compelling in the game. We're playing here as members of the um, SAS, of course. Although it might not be their primary armament, they have been seen in public with the SIG MCX. Now, as we are a contemporary collection here, um, we try to keep as up to date as we can. We do actually have an example of the SIG MCX. So just like in the game, and it's a pretty faithfully modeled weapon, caliber, the, the basic configuration of the receivers is pretty spot on. Pretty, it's very, a very modular weapon, uh, which fits Call of Duty's modular approach with the gunsmith in terms of how you configure the weapon in different ways. That makes more sense with a modern weapon like this than it does with some of the others that are in the game. Now, what would a Call of Duty Modern Warfare game be without an M4 or something like it? With the M203 40mm grenade launcher mounted under the barrel. The version depicted here is um, not a million miles away from what's sitting behind me. Now, this is such a common configuration. This is the Canadian um, DeMarco, now Colt Canada, equivalent to what we see in the game. So very similar. And then we have the M203 which you open up just like in the game, insert a cartridge, close it up and fire it. Uh, in terms of the the effects of, of, of what we see with this hybrid weapon effectively, the, the, the blast effects are quite well done. I think uh, games have improved in that respect. Uh, years ago, we'd have seen a fireball when a grenade, either a hand thrown grenade or an under barrel grenade was, was fired. Now it's much more of a, a blast effect with sort of dust or whatever's in the environment and um, you can't see them, but you know, your character's being, or the enemy is being wounded by effectively projectiles. And that's how grenades work in real life. Something we've seen from the first Modern Warfare onwards is an on-screen grenade site with a sort of ladder reticle, which um, I've never got on very well with, but um, so you get an on-screen aiming which is a bit of a throwback, really. We have iron sights, we have optical sights. It's interesting that we don't aim our underground grenades using the actual sights on the weapon. We still use the reticle on the screen. So I'm waiting for, for that to sort of catch up. Ah, the Uzi, a classic. Cold War era firearm, which of course is still in um, use today, albeit not very widespread use. Having said that, um, in the sort of conflict zones that we see depicted in the game, they're still around. They're, they're very robust. They're relatively easy to maintain. It's well depicted as well. Um, the rate of fire is accurate, which um, I've mentioned because most Uzis in games have not been. Um, the Uzi is quite a slow rate of fire about 600 rounds per minute, partly what makes it so controllable, that and the weight of the thing, it's quite heavy for such a small gun. Unless you're um, Arnold Schwarzenegger and you can hold it out in one hand and still apparently hit what you're aiming at. Check this out. 338 Lapua, armor piercing at 600 meters. I put it together myself. Please. Pausing. This was a bit of a head scratcher moment in the campaign. When I, when I came across the HDR, I thought I'd um, blip sideways into advanced warfare or something, because it's a very futuristic, on the face of it, wacky looking rifle. Uh, the guy says he made it himself, which is impressive. I should say that that's completely plausible for, for many weapons, in, in particular in the uh, Khyber region of Pakistan. As some people will already know, firearms are made on relatively basic tooling, sometimes even by hand, and they're re they are rebuilt from factory-made assemblies and components as well. So the idea of someone in this sort of transitional uh, Middle Eastern, South, uh, sort of Asian area of the world, um, or, or indeed elsewhere in the world, being able to make a gun himself is completely plausible, but it just doesn't kind of jibe with the visuals. This thing is clearly a, a, some sort of advanced, and as he says himself, 338 Lapua Magnum sniper rifle, a precision weapon. But it was a nice moment in the campaign because uh, you feel like you've got this thing that has the power and the precision to take on these vehicles that are, that are attacking. <laughs> 
Something I like about this is the the vapor trail of the bullets. It might not be quite what you'd see in real life, but um, the, the effort to, to replicate the visuals of a big heavy bullet smashing through uh, moisture in the air, which does create this sort of spiral trail. You can actually see where your bullets are going at long range. So that adds something, I think, to, to depict it in the game. Pausing. This this was another slightly confusing moment for me playing through this originally. So we're, we're into this nighttime level and to see the weapon in use be an M14 took me aback slightly, uh, especially with the with the red dot sight used for, for CQB type fighting. Uh, the M14, a 1950s battle rifle, full power cartridge, semi-automatic, and you may well put a suppressor on it to reduce your sound signature. The fact that you're running around with a, a close quarter battle sight on it is what uh, didn't quite tally, but traditionally you'd see something like this with a magnified optical sight on it and it would be for medium range, out to perhaps 800 meters, not shooting people in the face in the dark. And the, the sound suppressor report that we get from this rifle is very Hollywood almost like a like a laser sound. I'd, I'd expect a much sort of louder pop sound. So we, we see the player here taking out lights with the M14. This is a quite a common legitimate use of a suppressed weapon in this sort of situation. So, so it's a, an interesting real world gameplay mechanic, if that, if that makes sense, to use it to take out lights. <laughs> So the, the SVD or Dragonov sniper rifle, as it's known in uh, Russian doctrine anyway, and it's uh, it's an 800 meter rifle, um, which we don't typically see it capable of in, in um, Call of Duty games. Uh, here we see it used indoors, a bit more of a CQB environment. Makes some sense in that, uh, because it comes with a mount for a scope, you're able to fit a thermal optic and you're kind of, you're a bit hampered by the rate of fire of the, of the SVD, but it's powerful, just like in real life. So it will tend to take down bad guys pretty quickly. Pausing. So we've, we've got the um, the DP-12 shotgun here. The, the real key feature here is probably the incendiary rounds that it's firing, which have a real world parallel in, in what's called Dragon's Breath. So it's, it's a real round and it really will set stuff on fire. That's what incendiary means, of course. A load of buckshot is more devastating to, to a human body than an incendiary round would be. It would certainly have unpleasant effects. It would certainly be effective to some extent, but it's not something that's going to see real world use. Target. Uh, we see there another grenade launcher, but a standalone grenade launcher, originally a South African design, the Milcor MGL. In the museum collection, one of the early versions, it's an interesting weapon because it has this uh, wind up revolver mechanism. So you, you wind that up to a certain number of clicks. And then when you pull the trigger, it releases it to the next chamber and fires a shot. Very effective for exactly what we see in the game. There's, there might be a marksman engaging your, your squad. You can lob in explosive shells that will stop them from shooting at you. Pretty much the sort of thing this was designed for. Pausing. And of course, we have the hip fire minigun, beloved of action movies and video games alike. I've been fortunate enough to hold the, the, the rig from Predator and Terminator 2 once when I, on a trip to the States. Long story short, no. As it turns out, slightly more plausible than I ever believed. Somebody has loaded one up and fires it. You can find the video on YouTube and a handful of rounds go roughly where he wants, which is a handful more than I thought. You know, I thought it would be one round vaguely in the target area and then the recoil of three and a half to 5,000 rounds per minute which I think is higher than what we see in the game, would just swing you off to the side. You can do it, but you need a battery pack. So you need wires trailing back to a, a 24 volt battery, I think it is. You need tremendous amounts of ammunition. You cannot carry all of that around unless you are a T-800 or Jesse Ventura. Okay guys, that's it. Thank you for watching this breakdown of the weapons of Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2019 with me. Um, I've enjoyed it, I hope you have too.